These are the announcements for Sunday, April 28th, 2024. Welcome in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to the online worship of Word and Sacrament of Nativity and St. Paul Lutheran Churches in Reading, Pennsylvania, on this the fifth Sunday of Easter. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! David H. of St. Paul's was hospitalized after a fall and is now in the Reading Rehabilitation, Reading Hospital Rehabilitation Center. David H. of Nativity had a pacemaker put in this week and his breathing has improved. Linda N. of Nativity was at the doctor's and told that she has to stay off of her feet for five more weeks. Ruth Ann H. and Sharon H. are both recovering from breaks. We thank everyone who helped with and supported our Election Day food sales. We're very appreciative of what you purchased so that we can do some repairs and some projects around God's holy houses. Please, it's time to order geraniums for Pentecost. You can do so by contacting the church offices. Also, if you have someone graduating this year, please call the church office and let us know and tell us what their future plans are. And now, dear ones, beloved of Christ, let us prepare our hearts to worship Jesus.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, Alleluia. The grace of our risen Savior, the love of our Father in heaven, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power and riches and wisdom are strength and and glory are his. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and joy in the hymn of all creation. Blessing and all Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you give us your Son as the vine, apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in his resurrection, that we may bear the fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? 
Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading from Psalm 22. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of the nations shall bow before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord, who rules over the nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying to them, the Lord has acted. A reading from 1 John. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you, just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my word abides in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. We are in John's Gospel, in the middle of what is known as Jesus' farewell discourse. It seems a bit out of sync that we are in the post-resurrection time, and we should go back to the time right before Jesus' arrest and crucifixion. What is amazing about this is as we read these chapters, we realize that in Jesus' resurrection, all of our Lord's promises to his disciples in chapters 13 to 17 have been fulfilled. Jesus gives his word, and Jesus keeps his promises. In chapter 13, we have our Lord's washing of the disciples' feet, giving them a new commandment that they should love one another as he has loved them, as demonstrated in the washing of feet. Our reading today from 1 John gives us beautiful teachings on love, on God's love. God is love. Those who know God show God's through their love for others. During this past Lent, you have most definitely shown God's love, as our congregations donated over $3,000 for food ministries, fed 110 families at food pantry, gave complete Easter meals to 25 families of school children, and served lunch at Opportunity House. Thank you for showing God's love. Thank you for being God's love. John 14, Jesus tells the disciples that he will prepare a place for them and promises to send the Holy Spirit. In today's gospel, now we're at chapter 15, Jesus lets them know what that he will always be connected to them and they to him because Jesus is the vine and they are the branches a living, breathing entity. Amazingly, Pastor Caroline Lewis lists Jesus' statements leading up to the I am the vine statement. In John's Gospel, we hear Jesus say that I am the bread of life, I am the living bread, I am the light of the world, I am the gate for the sheep, I am the gate, I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way and the truth and the life. These statements tell us who Jesus is. God, the great I am. In today's gospel, after telling the, the disciples that he is going away, really distressing them if they stop and think about it, our Lord offers great pastoral care to those disciples by saying that I am the vine and you are the branches. 
up until this point, there hasn't been that connection between who Jesus is and who his followers are. You are the branches means not in the past and not in the future. It means that you are the branches today. Today, we are connected to Jesus and therefore to the Father, since Jesus is connected to the Father. And this connection reaches forward 2,000 years, and this connection goes into the future. We'll always be connected with Jesus. We are connected to Jesus, nurtured by him, loved by him, given life by him. We are nothing without him. Some vines have those tendrils that hold on tightly, and that's how Jesus holds on to us, tightly, and how you and I can hold on to him as well. And for that we say, thanks be to God. Amen. God has made us God's people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. We pray for the church around the world, for all ministers, and for the mission of the gospel. Keep all the newly baptized and confirmed in your care. Cleanse our hearts with your word and help us to abide in you always. God of grace, hear our prayer. For the well-being of the earth and of all created things, for rivers and lakes, streams and estuaries, melting glaciers and polluted waters, renew the face of the earth and shower us with your goodness. God of grace, hear our prayer. For the nations and all those in authority, for local, state, and national leaders, 
for elected representatives at every level, and for international organizations, that justice and peace may reign. God of grace, hear our prayer. For all those in need, for any experiencing homelessness or unemployment, for those fleeing from oppression or seeking asylum, and for all who are ill or suffering, God of grace, hear our prayer. For this congregation, for the caring ministries of this faith community, for all who visit and minister to one another, for all who take communion to homes or care centers, and for all who seek to share your love with the world, God of grace, hear our prayer. With thanksgiving for the saints who rest from their labors, help us, like them, to bear much fruit and to become your disciples, and at the last, bring us to that heavenly banquet where all will feast together at your table. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for those we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us share our Lord's peace with one another. Charlene, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you, Pastor. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary, our duty and our great joy, that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and ever-living God. But chiefly, we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of our Lord, for he is the true Passover lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who by his death has destroyed death, and by his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Simon Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their holy hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna. are indeed holy, O God, the fountain of all holiness. You bring light from darkness, life from death, speech from silence. We worship you for our lives and for the world you give us. We thank you for the new world to come and for the love that will rule all in all. We praise you for the grace shown to Israel, your chosen, the people of your promise, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the memory of the fathers and mothers, the homecoming from exile, and the prophet's words that will not be in vain. In all, we bless you for your only begotten Son, who fulfilled and will fulfill your promises. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body that is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Thanks be to God. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, 
This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you, shed for all people, for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Thanks be to God. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, O God, with this bread and cup, we remember the incarnation of your Son, his human birth and the covenant he made with us. We remember the sacrifice of his life, his eating with outcasts and sinners, and his acceptance of death. But chiefly on this day, we remember his rising from the tomb, his ascension to the seat of power, and his sending of the holy and life-giving Spirit. We cry out for the resurrection of our lives when Christ will come again in beauty and power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that we and all who share in this bread and cup may be united in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, may enter the fullness of the kingdom of heaven, and may receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place, and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. And now with confidence, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. God has prepared a holy feast for us. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Let us keep the feast. Alleluia. This is the body of Christ that is given for you. Amen. And this is the blood of Christ that is shed for you. Amen. Surely the body of Christ that is given for you and the blood of Christ that is shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. O God of love, you bind us to yourself in this sacrament and strengthen us through this meal for service to the world. Guide us by your spirit that we may forever witness to the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord of life. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and give you grace. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now and may the peace of the risen Christ go with you. We go to spread the good news. Christ is risen and living in our hearts.
see.